Don't miss the absolute worst in monster movie mayhem on dead and buried treasures. Ah, you know, Captain, we should be recording this. You know, Jack, we should be recording. This weekend and every Friday and Saturday night at 11 with our pre-show live at 10.30 on this Fright Network affiliate and our Facebook and YouTube pages, if you dare. <laughs> Is it wrong that I want their autograph? An all-new Dead and Buried Treasures featuring Captain Calico Drake and the crew of the Swashbucklers Haunt is up next. Ha! All right, I'll do it. But I want a building named after me and no green M&Ms in my dressing room. Where it's Halloween all year long. <laughs> Who is this? I... I'm Captain Calico. What? The Swashbuckler's Haunt, the most haunted and feared pirate ship of the Seven Seas and the Three Rivers. But I digress. I am your horror host, Calico Drake, captain of this here vessel. <laughs> and it is me solemn duty and me pleasure to present you with the absolute worst in monster movie mayhem every Friday and Saturday night right here on this channel for a weekend haunt. And I love this time of year. Halloween has just ended, but fortunately for us pirates, this is the one show where it continues all year long. What a curse. Plus, now, right after you've stuffed yourself on candy and treats and scares, your stomach barely has any time to recover. As now it's time for all new stories while stuffing yourself again on cranberries and mashed potatoes and green beans and stuffing and turkey and... You know, Jack, I, I get the distinct feeling that a lot of these holidays are designed to fatten us up. In fact, the more I think about it, the more tasty you're looking. I mean, you know, a little cranberry relish and who knows it. Ooh. A whole lot of saliva just formed at the back of me mouth. Ah, don't even think it, sir. I'm high in carbohydrates. Huh? All oh, right, right. Well, like I said, it's right after Halloween, so for you, at home, don't bother your mom too badly, and if you're lucky, 
she won't add any arsenic to the recipe. <laughs> ah, arsenic? Aye, some women get crazy in the kitchen around the holidays, Jack. Uh, lots of hooting and hollering and get out of my kitchen and make it yourselves. Uh, yes, the holidays are the best, Jack. Families just love screaming at each other. Ah, which would explain a lot when it comes to bootstrap Benny Captain. Aye, but in Bootstrap's defense, powdered arsenic does look a lot like sugar, or even flour, which is why we need a new cook with the holiday approaching. But on to other matters. Have we got a movie for you tonight, me hearties? <laughs> the island of dead and buried treasures is just ahead, Captain. Ah. Form the landing party, Mr. Bones. <laughs> it's time to go hunting for tonight's dinner. <laughs> you know, as the holiday approaches, muffins, <laughs> Thanksgiving is just around the corner, so as you gather your family together for a dining party, you won't soon forget, for some time, tonight's movie is a lot like that, as it's also gathering a dining party together for a party they won't forget. Until they're dead. <laughs> Murder is a plenty in tonight's film, boys and ghouls. Ah. Oh as we present to you Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. <laughs> the perfect dinner movie for an Agatha Christie whodunit and Thanksgiving, murder, mayhem, and more. Right, Jack? Ah, uh, well, Captain, as we are in America for an American holiday, wouldn't it be interesting to see some of the culture for that holiday? Well, that's exactly what we're doing, Jack. Agatha Christie gathers a bunch of people together on a remote island to eat and then kills them just like the pilgrims slaughtered the Indians and ate their corn to celebrate. Ah, Captain! That is not the story of Thanksgiving! Really? What's different about it? Ah, a discussion for another time, sir. What I was thinking of, perhaps showing our viewers at home how to host a dinner party, or even a Thanksgiving get-together, much like the guests on the island in tonight's movie will be doing. Well, ah, minus the murder. Hmm. Yes, Mr. Bones. Ready to set sail, Captain, but, uh, we're still without a cook, sir. Uh, perhaps you're right. Ah, uh, that's the spirit! I'll present a cooking show to the mateys this evening and show them all how to cook a proper Thanksgiving dinner. Ah, uh, oh boy. Again, not what I had in mind, Captain. Well, actually, Captain, we do have a candidate in our galley for the cook position. We do? Yes, we picked him up in port two days ago. Two days ago? But where the devil have I been? What have I been eating? Leftovers. Leftovers? I thought twice baked chicken was just a name. You mean we cooked it twice? Eh, uh, sort of. Sort of? What does that even mean? Well, the crew started to eat the chicken when we realized it wasn't, um, uh, quite, um... Cooked? Ah, dead. Dead? Right. That's when we realized we needed to get a professional on board. We didn't want to bore you with the details. Well, what the devil happened to our normal chef? Ah! You executed him! I did? Ah! You did! For what? The arsenic thing, sir. Oh. Ah! Right! And then what happened? Ah! Well, this is when you decided that you needed a new cook! I did? You did. Well, that's good. No, that's bad. It was? Why? Well, the crew ate him, sir. What? Ah, well, that's not exactly true, sir. He is the one who was undercooking the food. When the crew started getting sick, 
Well, they tossed him overboard, sir. What are we, cannibals? Why didn't I get sick? You were on your new diet, sir. Oh, right. Oh, and congratulations on that, by the way. I'm starting to hate apples, you know. Unless someone can put them in a pie. Ah, so we brought another cook aboard when we were in port. You did? Just like you instructed. I did. Ah, yes. yes! You know, you two sound awfully rehearsed. Ah, we do? We do? This new guy, can he cook? What are his credentials? Well, Captain, his resume is nothing short of spooktacular. It is? Ah, yes! yes. Ah, in fact, he has his own cooking show. He does? Yes, in fact. Uh, can I get a drum roll? Standing by in the galley, we have for your eating enjoyment, YouTube sensation Papa from Cooking with Papa. Oh my god. I can't believe what you two have done this time. Ah, uh, sorry, so Captain. Sorry, Captain. Seriously, this has gone too far. I mean, how is he supposed to cook anything all tied up like that? Taos, Talia, in here, honey, in here. Good thing you're here, you know what? Give me some help, please. Can you get this off? Oh, thanks. Oh. That a girl. Now let's figure out what we're doing in this place. I tell you what I'll do. This movie's ready for tonight, Mr. Bones. Stand by to roll. When I get back to the ship, we will present the mateys at home with a cooking class 101 for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'll shoot it myself, of course. My cinematic background speaks for itself, so do my culinary skills for that matter. But enough about me. In the meantime, we'll present our mateys with a dinner party they won't soon forget. It starts with 10 and ends with none. <laughs> and then there were none. You watch this while I prep for the food of a lifetime. <laughs> you know, Jack, I am getting kind of hungry.
What a quiet place. Indeed, yes, very quiet. Very quiet. There's your bathroom, miss. I uh, see we have the same bathroom. I think I'd better introduce myself. I'm Vera Claythorne, Mrs. Owen's secretary. Oh, my name is Emily Brent. Is there anything you want, miss? Well, I'd like to see Mrs. Owen. I'm Mrs. Owen's new secretary. I expect you know that. No, miss. I don't know anything. Just a list of the ladies and gentlemen who were invited for the weekend. Didn't Mrs. Owen mention me? I, I haven't seen Mrs. Owen yet. We only came here a few days ago. Oh. This is a large house. What staff have you here? Just me and Rogers, miss. Mr. Owen, no, we've arrived. He's not here yet, sir. Uh, where is Mrs. Owen? Oh, they were delayed in London, sir. I uh, got a letter. They'll be here for dinner. Eight o'clock, sir. We tell the story in Ireland about the two Englishmen who were cast away on a desert island for three years and never spoke to each other because they hadn't been introduced. I'm not English. My name is Prince Nikita Starlov. Call me Nicky. Well, that breaks the ice, gentlemen. I'm Judge Quincannon. How do you do, sir? I'm uh, Dr. Armstrong. My name's Lombard. Philip Lombard. I'm General Mandrake. Sir John Mandrake, isn't it, General? Some years ago, I was called in consultation. Your wife was ill. My wife is dead, sir. If you gentlemen will be good enough to follow me, I will show you to your rooms. I'm afraid I didn't catch your name. Blore. Blore. William Henry Blore. Oh, Philip Lombard. I'm afraid you've got the wrong bag. You're very observing, Mr. Blore. CM, Charles Morley, an old friend of mine. I like his taste. I even bought him his clothes. Oh, excuse me, Doctor. Uh, I thought this was a closet. It seems we're sharing a bathroom. Oh, I... I didn't know. The only time I regret being a bachelor is when I have to dress for dinner. Let me help you. Thank you. Do you uh, know this part of the English coast? No, I can't say I do. Something magical about an island. Yeah, like a little world of its own. How would you like to spend your last days here? Oh, no thanks. I think a weekend will be enough. Uh, we all build islands in imagination. Represents escape. Half of my patients are sick because they're trying to escape reality. Well, what's your answer? Oh, I tell them fairy tales. <laughs> I build them islands of imagined security. Don't you believe in medicine, Doctor? <laughs> Do you believe in justice, Judge? <laughs> Mr. Bloor? Yes? The bathroom's yours. Do you think they're done? Done enough for them. Ow! Ethel. Don't stand there gawking. Get them up. Did you wash the floor this morning? Do you suppose I have time for everything? It's not right to go inviting a house full of guests. I'll talk to Mr. Owen when he comes. You tell him we're quitting. 
The agency didn't tell us the house was so big and so lonely. You knew it was an island. Huh, with only one house. Makes me nervous. Here! What they don't know won't hurt them. If anyone has to eat a pick of dirt before he dies. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I propose a toast? to our gracious hostess, Mrs. Owen. Ah, uh -uh, doctor, I saw you. You drank water. It's bad luck. Water never hurt anyone, sir. Especially in my profession. Don't forget the old proverb, doctor. Never trust a man who doesn't drink. <laughs> Sounds like the Bible. <laughs> Great book. And now I give you our charming host, Mr. Owen. Jolly good fellow. And I hope, sir, that will conclude all possible toasts. <coughs> Tell me, Miss Claythorne, why do they call this place Indian Island? I don't know. Uh, excuse me, sir. The boatman told me it's because it's shaped like the head of an Indian. Oh, oh that accounts for the little Indians. Indians! We are not out of toast, sir. I drink to the Indians, each little Indian individually. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten little Indians. Ten little Indians. It's like the nursery rhyme. Ten little Indian boys went out to dine. One choked his little self and then there were nine. Oh, poor little fellow. Here's to him. And what happened to the others? Nine little Indian boys sat up very late. One overslept himself and then there were eight. Then what happened? You'll find the rhymes on the piano. Mr. Owen seems to be fond of little Indians. said he'd stay right there and then there were seven seven little indian boys chopping up some sticks till one chopped himself in half and then there were six six little indian boys playing with a hive a bumblebee stung one of them and then there were five five little Followed one, and then there were three, three little Indian boys walking in the snow. A big bear hugged one, and then there were two. The place for nursery rhymes is in the nursery. Don't worry, Judge. He's down to the last Indian. Two little Indian boys sitting in the sun. One got all frizzled up, and then there was one. One little Indian boy left all alone. So he went and hanged himself. And then there were none. Silence, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Mr. Owen, speaking. You are charged with the following crimes. General Sir John Mandrake, that you did deliberately send your wife's lover, Lieutenant Arthur Macefield, to his death. Emily Brent, that you did cause and bring about the death of your young nephew, Peter Brent. Dr. Edward G. Armstrong, that through uncontrolled drunkenness you did kill Mrs. Mary Cleese, Prince Nikita Stala, that you were guilty of the murder of Fred and Lucy Marlowe, Vera Claythorne, that you did murder your sister's fiancé, Richard Barclay, Judge Francis J. Quintanon, that you were responsible for the death by hanging of one Edward Seaton, Philip Lombard, that you were guilty of the death of 21 men, members of an East African tribe. William H. Bloor, that by perjuring your testimony, you did bring about the death of James Landor.
Thomas and Ethel Rogers, that you brought about the death of your invalid employer, Mrs. Jennifer Brady. <laughs> Prisoners at the Bar of Justice, have you anything to say in your defense? Silence, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Mr. Up What's going on here? What kind of a practical joke is this? It's on the record. <coughs> An outrageous lie. It's called Swan Song. May I ask who put this on the gramophone? I did, sir. Why? I didn't know what it was. On my oath, I didn't know. I... I was just obeying orders, sir, that's all. Whose orders? Mr. Owens? No, let's get this quite clear. Mr. Owens' orders were... What, exactly? To put the record on at, at nine o'clock. It was sealed up. I, I, th I thought it was just a piece of music. It's the truth, sir. I haven't seen Mr. Owens. I was telling my wife. I tell you we shouldn't have come here. I want to get away. I won't touch that money. Shut up. First thing to do, Rogers, is to get your wife to bed. May I have your attention, please? This letter to Rogers is signed by Mr. U.N. Owen. I must confess I don't know Mr. Owen personally. What kind of a man is he? Who knows him? <laughs> you all come to a house and you don't know the host. What about yourself, your highness? Oh, with me it's different. I am a professional guest. I knew we shouldn't have come here. Quiet, Ethel. I knew somebody would find out about it someday. I told you. Shut up, I tell you. <laughs> oh, she's quite out of her head, Doctor. Uh, hysteria induced by shock. Uh, give her this sedative. Ten drops and half a glass of water. Yes, sir. She doesn't sleep. Repeat the dose in two hours. Oh, I, uh, I hope she'll sleep, Doctor. Uh, Dr. Armstrong, we've taken all the evidence except your own. Well, what's your reason for being here? Well, uh, quite frankly, I came here professionally. Uh, I received a letter from Mr. Owen asking me to come here and spend the weekend and pretend to be a guest so that I <laughs> might examine his wife who had refused to see a doctor. I'll summarize our findings. We've all received letters from old, trusted friends inviting us to spend the weekend here as guests of their friends, the Owens. Miss Claythorne was employed through an agency and told to report to Mrs. Owen. This letter to Mr. Lombard is the only one directed from Mr. Owen. <laughs> Very peculiar. I might even call it threatening. What do you say? I say that the only person whose presence here hasn't been explained is that gentleman. Well, Your Honor, I see no reason to conceal any longer. I'm here to do a job. I was hired. By whom? This man, Owen. You saw him? No. Enclosed a fat money order with that. <laughs> Told me to join the house party and pose as one of the guests. I run a detective agency in Plymouth. I got me credentials. Look here, Judge. All of these letters refer to our host as U.N. Owen. U.N. Owen. Unknown. Yeah, Mr. Unknown is not only in test as he under false pretenses, but he's taking the trouble to find out a great deal about us all. Oh, That's a lie! Son! Me! Not me! Listen, my friends. The accusation is true. Now I remember. A year ago. Two people in the road. I was driving fast, fast, fast! What happened? They took my license away. What about the two people? I ran over them. Beastly bad luck. I'm still 
not clear as to the purpose of our unknown host in getting us to assemble here. In my opinion, this person, whoever he may be, is not of normal mind. He may be dangerous. I think it would be well for us all to leave this island immediately. I quite agree, sir. Rogers, how soon can we get the boat from the mainland? I can't, sir. There's no telephone. The boat only comes twice a week, sir. It won't come again till Monday. And this is only Friday. You've no boat here? No, sir. Why do you want to leave, my friends? Why don't we get to the bottom of this mystery? It's wonderful. Thrilling! At our time of life, sir, we've no desire for thrills, as you call them. Your legal mind has lost its taste for adventure. I am all for crime, Your Honor. May I propose a toast? Here is to crime. disgusting to drink like an animal. Huh? What did you say? He's not moving. Just plain drunk. Just plain dead. What did the doctor say? sure that there's no one else on this island. I'd swear to it, sir. I believe you, Rogers. But I'm afraid your story will be questioned by the police. gone to bed, Mr. Blower. In our profession, Doctor, we don't always do what we appear to do. Perhaps it's the same in yours. Why don't you want me to touch that glass? I thought it'd be inadvisable for you to have your fingerprints on it. Smell it. Little solution. Suicide? That, I believe, comes under your profession, sir. And speaking of coming under a profession, tonight we are going to present you, me hearties, with a real professional. Welcome back, you scallywags, to Dead and Buried Treasures. Tonight, we're going to get you into the mood of Thanksgiving by presenting you with our real professional. Welcome to the show, Papa from Cooking with Papa. Sorry about the whole tied up thing, Papa. Well, to get things moving here, Papa, I will be shooting the entire thing with me trusty camera from a first person perspective kind of thing. So why don't we begin for the mateys at home? I'll switch the camera over here and we'll go into our galley. Ah, there we go. Much better. Ah, welcome, Papa. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry about the old uh, <clears throat> shackles thing. Uh, my uh, my crew gets a little <laughs> rambunctious. <laughs> well, yeah, it's okay. You know, we're not used to being tied up. We're just used to being asked nicely. Let's. I think we need to give them the Messino eye towels. Let's give it to them. Oh, that's a that's a pirate eye if I've ever seen one. But that's okay. It is Thanksgiving, so we're more than happy to come here, share, and make our famous sweet sausage a 
chestnut stuffing. Oh, I like the sound of it for Thanksgiving. And you know what, Papa? I can tell already right now you're better than me prior chef who may use ingredients like this, which never really went over, or this ingredient. And when you use the witch's poison, <laughs> then the witch's brew is never that good. So we had to uh, have that particular chef uh, walk the plank. What? what the? Did you say walk the plank? That's the pre-show that airs a half hour before Dead and Mary Treasure. Uh, uh, is this a shameless plug? Get out of here, you crewman! Get! We're trying to cook his famous... What was it again, Papa? Sweet sausage and chestnut stuff. Oh, me hiking. It sounds delicious. Tell me what goes into it, will you? Well, of course, we got to start with cows. Oh, oh sweet sausage. Oh. Is that nice and red? Look at the beautiful color on that. That's perfect. Perfect. We get it from... It does kind of look like pepperoni. <laughs> it does a little bit, Pop. It comes from the same meat. And since we know the best meat cutter in town, who's that? Dad. Dad. We always get the best meat. That's oh, the beginning. Yeah. Sweet sausage. What's next, Al? Whoa. Uh, we freshly chopped carrots, onions, and celery. That we all this, great. We all we did all this with our hands tied up, didn't we, Towns? <laughs> Again, uh, sorry about that. Uh, accidents do happen. Oh, look at this freshly cubed, baked this morning, sourdough bread. Oh, sourdough bread, me favorite. I like the sound of it. And of course, we use a little chicken stock. Oh, yes, I like the sound of that too. <laughs> Heavy cream. Heavy, the heavier the better. Yeah, and some fresh scrambled eggs. Oh, yes. That and is our good special stuff. spices. And then again, fresh baked, chopped, roasted chestnuts. Oh, <laughs> would that be your secret ingredient, Papa? Sure is. Sure <laughs> is. So I guess there's nothing to it but to get started. Well, I tell you what, that sounds great, Papa. And for you at home, we'll be right back. You can get into the Agatha Christie movie, and we'll have be right back after a word from our sponsors. <laughs> oh, my mouth is watering already. Ahoy, once again, you scallywags. It is I, Hank. From the swashbuckler's haunt, it's time to reveal the answer to last month's trivia question, sponsored by Midas in Washington. Here was that question. As a fellow pirate and a member of Drake's crew, that seemed pretty straightforward to me. Aye, but just in case, here was the answer to that less than perplexing question. Our winner was notified by email, of course, where they won a free oil change at Midas in Washington. <laughs> Jealous? Can't say I blamed you. If that's the case, make sure to tune in later this evening where you can save yourself a ton of treasure and get a free oil change yourself if you can act quicker than the Kraken and get this month's question correct. And keep watching Dead and Buried Treasures and her sister shows, our pre-show Walk the Plank and after show the pirate's booty. <laughs> Stay the course, me fiends, and abide by the code. Now available, the first season of Dead and Buried Treasures on DVD. That's right, all you horror enthusiasts. If old movies are your thing, and even weirder pirates and ghosts, we have the perfect gift for Christmas, birthdays, Father's Day, M M Mother's Day. Oh hell, it's perfect for any holiday. Get one for Arbor Day. Excellent. I love watching those funeral scenes from like a like the top of a castle where no one can see you. And 
always sticking me nose in where it's not welcome. Starring Christopher Lee, Vincent Price, Faye Ray, Dick Miller, Richard Boone, Beautiful Women, Killer Robots, Abbott and Costello, Scrooge, Zombies, featuring the directing works of George Romero, Francis Ford Coppola, Agatha Christie, and a whole lot more. Just $79.95. But the good news is the postage is paid anywhere in the continental United States. So what are you waiting for? Get yours today and prepare yourselves for laughs. Things like this always turn out great for us. Just drop us a line on Facebook for details. You won't regret it, but uh, your wallet might. <laughs> That's pirate talk, you know. Phoenix Comics and Toys has done it again. Hi, the here. Yar, me hearties. The Dead and Buried Treasure Fan Club is now accepting new crews. Each fan club kit contains one to quarter statue with a secret compartment containing your doubloon, one autographed photo of the captain and Jack, and one welcoming letter. Yar! My gold doubloon! Decode each episode's code for a chance to win prizes. Yar! <laughs> Set sales to Etsy and Facebook to order yours today. Yar! Buster, your brother needs to use the bathroom. I'll be right out there! <laughs> Welcome back, me hearties. Those commercials can be hideous. Well, in any case, let's get back to getting your family ready for Thanksgiving with YouTube sensation Cooking with Papa. Before we get back to whatever it is Agatha Christie has cooked up for her holiday. Let me get my camera here. <laughs> ah, there we go. Back here in Migali with Papa, YouTube sensation Talia, and they're making some wonderful Thanksgiving food for this Thanksgiving. What do we got cooking, Papa? Well, we're getting right into this sausage and, and chestnut stuffing. First thing we gotta do is brown our sausage. Oh, do you need me to help cut it? I got a perfect knife here. Yeah, it's already cut. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Uh, maybe this one, I can use that? No, 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 no. No, you don't like that. that. Well, I have something you can turn into sausage. Would this help a little bit? I found it down rolling in the... No, you're going to make something else, huh? Yeah, yeah. Our sausage comes from an animal a little bit bigger. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's, uh, I'm just trying to help, Papa. What do you got cooking? All right, we start with a little olive oil. Olive oil, olive oil. <laughs> I said it in Italian. Didn't I? <laughs> now we're going to put our sausage in, and we're going to brown that. Yeah. Oh, that looks good already. Me doctor would have a problem with eating all of that, I think. Well, nobody should eat it all once. Yeah. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Pop. I'm kind of hungry this Thanksgiving. Okay, so we're going to let this brown. Now, you want to get it nice and even. Break it up as it's cooking. Oh, yeah. Get nice brown. And we'll let that sizzle in there for a little bit. He's just getting ready. He's gonna ready to try it already? Oh, I'm ready to eat it now. Yeah, he, he likes raw meat, Tows? That looks good. I can't wait to get me mayonnaise on that. I can't wait to eat some of that you got oh, cooking man. there. But I tell you what, while the meat is browning, I'm gonna get you guys back to Agatha Christie's and then there were none. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Doctor Armstrong. Dr. Armstrong. What is it, Rogers? It's the wife, sir. She doesn't look right to me. Go ahead. I'll follow you. Oh, good morning, Miss Brent. I hope you slept better than I did. I slept very well, thank you. I have nothing on my conscience. Good morning, General. Good morning. 
General Mandrake. Yes, Juliet. Oh, forgive me, young lady. I, I was thinking of my wife. Good morning, Miss Claythorne. What about breakfast? Do you mind if I sit down like this? Morning, Judge. Morning, Miss Brent. Good morning. Why, something worrying you? I don't understand it. A lot of things I don't understand, sir. These are little figures. How many were there last night? Ten. Ten, yeah. Rogers found one broken after, uh, after what happened. And now, how many do you see? Eight. Only eight. Eight? That's what I counted. Oh, let Mr. Owen worry about it. They're his Indians. What about breakfast? I'm no? afraid you'll have to go without breakfast. Mrs. Rogers died in her sleep. What? what? Mrs. Rogers? How? Heart failure? Her heart certainly failed to beat. What caused it to fail, I cannot say. Conscience? Oh, conscience, my eye. What about her husband? He was scared to death. I fear his wife would talk her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry there's no breakfast prepared, but you see, my wife... It's all right, Rogers. Of course, Rogers, we understand. But uh, I thought you told us he was dead. His wife. Huh? His, His wife. wife. Wife? Mm, no, no, no. I don't think a man would ever kill his wife. No matter how guilty she was. The wicked flee when no man pursue her. Two accidental deaths in 12 hours. I don't believe it. All right. What do you say, Judge? How does the rhyme go, Miss Clayton? Uh, ten little Indians. One chopped his little self, and then there were nine. Uh -huh. Go on. One never slept himself, and then there were eight. We are eight people on this island now. Lombard, I'll be ready in a minute. Take your time. You know, I got it. Got what? There's one thing this fellow Owen forgot. This island is just a bare rock. We'll catch that raving maniac. We've been acting like fools. 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 You mean Rogers was lying? Why not? The man's scared. Scared out of his senses. It's obvious. That's why I think he's telling the truth. A lunatic like Owen could have found a hiding place before Rogers arrived here. It doesn't matter if Rogers is lying or not. You agree that Mr. Owen and Squire is hiding, don't you? He'll certainly be dangerous. We ought to be armed. Yes, too bad we're not allowed to carry firearms in England. It puts the normal citizen at a great disadvantage. You mean you haven't any weapon? You know, Blow, it's strange, but I came to the same conclusion you did. That Mr. Owen is hiding. Maybe inside this house. He'd have to have an accomplice for me. If you ask me, Rogers, isn't the only queer one in this house. You never know what's going on. Come on, Rogers. Come on, Rogers. Come on, Rogers. Come on, Rogers. Come on, I have a feeling I'm being watched. Secretly. strange voice. Um, gentlemen, I have come to the conclusion that the invisible Mr. Owen is hiding somewhere on this island. Extraordinary. I was looking for you to tell you the same thing. That's what I think, sir. Me too. We've all come to the same opinion. We must find this place of concealment. Immediately. So long as there is a lunatic at large, we are in mortal danger. Do you 
hear that? Hello, Puss. Looking for a mouse? So are we. What I'd like to know is whether we're the cat or the mouse. Nobody in the general's room, not even the general. What about the old boy? I don't know. I don't think he even knows where he is himself. Oh. Nothing in there but the Russian. I keep hearing that song he was singing last night, just before he popped off. Ten little Indians. Yeah. That certainly was his swan song. One thing is certain, he isn't inside, therefore he must be outside. Brilliant thinking, Blore. Huh? watching for the boat. Won't come till Monday. No boat will ever come, Juliet. We are here forever. What made you love him, Juliet? Sir John. Oh. Forgive me, my child. You don't understand. Not a living thing. Not even a hiding place. Not even a seagull could hide down there. I don't understand it. Maybe we've been wrong. Built up a nightmare out of imagination. Two people dead isn't imagination. The Russian may have committed suicide. And Mrs. Rogers? Well, you didn't give her an overdose last night, did you? Doctors can't afford to make mistakes of that kind. We cannot blunder as detectives sometimes do. Wouldn't be your first mistake if that gramophone record is to be believed. Gentlemen, gentlemen, this is no time for quarreling. Let's face it, we're in a trap. You shouldn't forget the ten little Indians on the dinner table. That's right. Mr. Owen's hand is plain to see. Yes, but where the devil is Mr. Owen himself? on this island, he'll catch his death of cold. If that's supposed to be a joke, I don't see the point. All we have to do is to keep quiet and we'll hear him sneeze. Oh. I'm sorry, it's only cold meat and salad. I, I did the best I could. Oh, yes, Hello. it's bad. Roger, we're only seven today. Oh, I'm sorry. Have you called General Mandrake? Oh, I, I looked in his room, miss, but he's not there. Didn't he come in the house? I didn't see him, Doctor. Not the last time. He was mooning around on the beach. He seemed quite abnormal. I know where he is. You stay here, Miss Claythorne. You say the general was behaving very strangely. Like a man out of his mind. In other words, a lunatic. Right, oh, the old boy's balmy. Whom the gods destroy, they first make mad. Well? Aren't we looking for a lunatic? He said no boat will ever come. Then he knows something. Maybe he's not as crazy as we think he is. Doctor, you better come with me. Don't wait for us. And don't wait for the general any longer. Poison glass could mean suicide. An overdose of sedative might have been an accident. But this instrument 
which you saw me remove from the back of the third victim means only one thing. Murder. Or an act of God. My dear lady, in my experience of ill-doing, Providence leaves the work of punishment to us mortals. Evidently, Mr. Orn believes we're guilty of certain crimes which the law can attach, and he's appointed himself to execute justice. That is why he has enticed us to this island. There's no one on this island, I tell you, no one. Doctor, Dr. Armstrong. What is it, man? There's another little Indian figure missing. That accounts for the general. I was expecting that. You uh, just said there's no one on this island. In the sense you mean, no. Nevertheless, I'm now certain that Mr. Owen is here. How can he be here? I don't believe in the invisible man. He's not invisible. Mr. Owen could only come to this island in one way. It's perfectly clear. Mr. Owen is one of us. studying Mr. Owen's little scheme. Maybe you know how the general was killed. My dear Bloor, can't you read? Eight little Indian boys traveling in Devon. One said he'd stay there, and then there were seven. The old soldier stayed here, didn't he? Am I disturbing your little game? Not at all, Bloor. Nothing clears the mind like a game of precision. What game are you playing, John? We've come to the conclusion that, Doctor and I, that this whole story is a game of the mind. There we are. Each of us came to this island. The Rogers were waiting for us. Don't forget, waiting for us. One of the ten is Mr. Owen. Well, we agree on that. Out of all of us, three persons are definitely cleared. Who? Oh. The dead ones. Our Russian friend, Mrs. Rogers, and the general. Seven little Indians left. Six. One is bogus. Correct, sir. One of us is Mr. Owen. Which one? Where's your alibi? I'm not like you, Mr. Blore. I'm a well-known professional man. My dear doctor, that proves less than nothing. I, too, am a well-known person. But doctors have gone mad before now. Judges have gone mad. So have policemen. And uh, may I say, explorers, Mr. Lombard. You may, you may. Why do you leave Miss Claythorne out of it? We don't. No, you, my dear lady. I quite appreciate that nobody can be exonerated without proof. What about Rogers? That's what I'm thinking. What do we know about him? He put that record on the gramophone, didn't he? That's a fact. How do we know Rogers didn't lease this house and pretend to be the butler? psychology. You can rule Rogers out definitely. Well, I don't see why. Look at the shape of his head. He hasn't the brains for it. And don't forget there's something else, sir. My wife was one of the victims. In my time, Rogers, I've had several husbands before me guilty of the murder of the wives. Oh, well, if you put it that way, sir, they, they do sometimes drive a man crazy. We must suspect each and every one among us. No, I warn everybody to be on his guard. If not, We shall all go the same way. And Mr. Owen will very soon be alone on this island. If 
flat, Miss Claythorne. Aren't you afraid the others will think you're playing inappropriate? Can't stand silence. I have to do something. Go on, play. If it's any comfort to you, there's one person who doesn't suspect you. Thank you. Aren't you going to return the compliment? I haven't made up my mind about you, Mr. Lombard. Whom do you suspect? One there is the fire. I think you're wrong. Well, who then? A man who believes in punishing crimes. His brain might snap and he'd want to be executioner after having been a judge. to ask you a few questions. Did you <laughs> prepare a nice dinner? Oh, just cold meat, sir. Ah, I see. Well, I'm sure you'll do your best, Rogers. Uh, is there uh, plenty of food for the weekend? Oh, yes, sir. Everything was provided for. Oh, oh Mr. Bloor, may I uh, ask you a question? Of course, of course, my dear fellow. How many will you be for dinner tonight? But I see what you mean. <laughs> Don't forget your vote, Rogers. In a case like this, a secret vote is the only way to bring out into the open what we're all thinking. circumstances. Now, who do we suspect of being Mr. Owen? Mr. Lombard, one vote. Mr. Blore, one vote. Ha, ha. Dr. Armstrong, one vote. Rogers, one vote. Miss Brent, one vote. Well, I see I haven't been neglected. One vote. Another vote for you, Rogers. You win. You mean, sir, that I am being accused? Well, it's not precisely a majority, but you have the most votes. They're saying it's me because I'm only a butler. You said I didn't have the brains to do it. I didn't vote for you, Rogers. Well, who did then? Who didn't drink the cocktails you just served? You think I poisoned those cocktails? I'll show you, sir. Picking on an innocent man. I can't touch even a drop of alcohol. And if that's what you think of me, I'm not going to serve any dinner. Oh, Don't look so offended, Rogers. If it had been anybody but you, sir. I'm sorry, Rogers, but how do I know you didn't vote for me? I didn't, Your Honor. 
I voted for... Well, time will tell. Well, after all, Rogers, nobody in this house is above suspicion. Never in my life have I been accused of any crime, sir. What about that gramophone record? What about it? That woman you worked for, she left you some money, didn't she? Let's not stand on her dignity, Rogers. After all, she was sick. Didn't you, um, shorten her suffering in this world? With the complicity, of course, of poor Mrs. Rogers. I'm not going to argue with you, sir. But what makes you think I would kill anybody who wasn't going to leave me any money? <laughs> no, thank you. Obviously, we can't sit up all night like this. I'm going to retire. Good night. If you don't mind, I'll say good night, too. If you don't mind, Miss Playthorne, I'd rather go upstairs alone. May I remind you, Miss Brent, that I'm the only one whose name wasn't mentioned in the voting? That's what I mean. I find that fact most peculiar. I know Miss Brent won't mind if there's a third person. Not so fast, Mr. Lombard. I'll go with you. The more the merrier. And the safer. Quite lonely, quite, quite lonely. Rogers! Yes, sir. Oh, would you mind keeping us company for a while? <laughs> Anything you wish, sir. <coughs> Don't put any water in it. I shall, sir. <laughs> Good night, Miss Claythorne. Don't forget to lock your door. You cannot lock out the devil. I think there's another one who's bombing. me. Looks so it'll end with the old lot going that way. I don't fancy you will, Lord. No. Take a lot to send me off my head. I don't think you'll be going that way either. I feel quite sane at the moment. Thank you. Have you told him? Yes, sir. I know the jury's decision. You'd feel safer if I didn't stay inside the house tonight. Well, then, I shall sleep in the woodshed. And now, if you'll excuse me, good night. I'll lock it behind him. That's not enough, Mr. Blow. Still seven. Lock that door, please. Put the key there. We'll have no more Indian tricks tonight. Lock it, Mr. Blow. No way. Now no one can get in there but you. Oh, I see. Well, but, but, but who's going to keep it? Keep away from that door. It's me, Lombard. Open up. Do you take me for a fool, Mr. Lombard? Don't be silly, Rogers. Don't be silly yourself, sir. This is Judge Quintanon. You know my voice, Rogers. Dr. Armstrong. This is Blow, Rogers. Open the door. At a time like this, I wouldn't open the door, even if it was Santa Claus. We just want to give you a key. What for? 
Never mind, you idiot. Hurry up, it's raining. Shove it. Under the door, sir. Good night, Roger. Keep your door locked. <laughs> Don't worry about me, sir. from the outside. And if it should turn out the one of you is Mr. Owen, just remember, I'm a very light sleeper. Good night. Good night, gentlemen. May we all meet safely in the morning. Good night. Good night, sir. Better than mine? Better sign-up bonus? Better travel perks? Is that how Brad took that trip to Barcelona? Wait, Barcelona? Barcelona? Steve, I got it on Nerd Wallet. Ah. He said all that out loud. Want a better credit card? We've got you. From the best rates to the best rewards, for all your credit card questions, turn to the nerds. Answer. A door locked? Of course. Try it. She's not here. You grasp a fact very quickly, Bloor. What's wrong, Mr. Bloor? Miss Brent's missing. I locked it all your door and she was the only one who didn't answer. What's wrong with that? It's late. Yes, we all of us slept. I heard her get up. She must have gone downstairs. I locked that door last night. Who opened it? Look. Good morning. Oh, it's such a pretty pattern. I thought I'd like to copy it for a new shawl. Was that door locked when you went out? Oh, yes, I opened it. Good morning, Miss Brent. I, too, like to walk before breakfast, but I wouldn't have gone out alone. I feel perfectly safe when I'm alone. Thank you. I share your feeling. But didn't you know that Rogers was outside? Poor man. I hope he didn't catch cold. What's that? Someone's knocking. Kitchen door. Rogers, of course. He wants to get in. I said we forgot all about breakfast. Where is he? Well, somebody was knocking. Rogers! Not there. Rogers! Know what I think? We got our man. It's Rogers. It fits the psychological pattern. His behavior last night was distinctly abnormal. Psychological pattern, my eye. I go by facts. He was officially accused. Fact. He got drunk. He wouldn't open the door to the woodshed. Fact. Realizing this morning that he'd gone to the end of his rope, he disappears. Fact. Another fact you haven't mentioned about Rogers. He's dead. The 
murder was fastidious. He cleaned this blade after striking down his victim. Obviously, he crept up behind, swung this chopper, and brought it down, splitting the cranium. Seven little Indian boys chopping up sticks. One chopped himself in half, and then there were six. Would it have needed much strength to strike the blow? Well, a woman could have done it, if that's what you mean. Miss Claythorne was locked in her room, Doctor. If that's what you mean. We were all in our rooms. Except... No breakfast yet? No. If I had a butler like Rogers, I'd soon get rid of him. Wait, we've forgotten something. What? The dining room. Still out. Where's the key? We found it in Rogers' pocket. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another one missing? But the door was locked. I get it. of a bee sting being fatal. No. Why? Six little Indian boys playing with a hive. A bumblebee stung one, and then there were five. Very stupid to kill the only servant in the house. Now we don't even know where to find the marmalade. Watch out for a bee. I'd be careful of that young man. I mean to, Miss Brent. I'm careful of everyone. A clear conscience is the best armor. This island is an image of life. Innocents has to live surrounded by criminals. That sounds like Mr. Owen talking. I see nothing wrong with his idea of punishing the guilty. What about his accusations against you? I wonder if these eggs are fresh. What about it, Miss Brent? Your young nephew, aren't you to blame for his death? Family gossip, Miss Claythorne. My sister's boy had bad blood, from his father's side, of course. Whipping did no good. Naturally, I had to have him placed in the reformatory. I do hope these eggs aren't overcooked. What happened to the boy? Oh, I never saw him again. He added to his many sins by hanging himself. I got it. I know Triple Art Indian. Who? Rogers. He had the key to this room. Fact. He sneaks in and takes a little Indian, locks the door again, goes back to the woodshed where he chops some sticks. Fact. And then... And then? He takes the chopper and splits his own cranium, as the doctor would say. Fact. I'd like to see you do that to yourself, Bloor. Would take practice. Uh, <coughs> Anyone inside the house could leave without being noticed. True, Miss Brent? Perfectly true. The murderer meets Rogers outside and kills him. He then takes the key from his victim's pocket, and you know the rest. Yes, but the key was still in Rogers' pocket. Of course. The murderer puts the key back in Roger's pocket and goes to bed again. All goes for an innocent walk before breakfast. Sorry, Miss Brent. Will anyone have more tea? Lombard! Lombard! Yes, Blow? What you doing here? You called me, didn't you? Uh, yes. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I ain't saying, but don't you think the old judge knows too much? Describing every move? You think he'd been at the scene of the crime? My dear Blow, in my opinion, you haven't a chance. 
Well, how's that? Lack of imagination. A criminal with a brain like you and Owen can think rings around you any time he wants to. No man ever got the better of me. Yet, how about a woman? Yes, yes. One should never trust a woman. She's clearly a manic depressive. I don't know why I didn't see it before. She was very strange in the kitchen this morning. We all behaved strangely. But I find no evidence. She left no clue. But she did. What about this, eh? No sane person would think of using seaweed as a pattern for a shawl. She tried to throw us off the track. It's her. I'll stake my life, it's her. Wait, Lord. Let Miss Claythorne call her. She'll be less suspicious. Miss Brand! Miss Brand! B, Doctor. Somebody must have taken it. It's not here. You can see for yourself. What poison was injected? Well, I can only guess. It was very potent. Uh, she must have died uh, <clears throat> immediately. But the bee. That bee in her room. That's our murderer's artistic touch. He likes to stick to his blasted nursery jingle. It's mad. We're all mad. I'm not, Mr. Lombard. I still have my reasoning powers. There are five of us left. One of us is a murderer. The rest of us are defenseless. Defenseless? How do we know one of us hasn't got a revolver? A good point, Law. How do we know? Well, I know I haven't got one. Tell me, it, it's against the law. How about you, Doctor? Oh, of course not. You may search me, gentlemen. Search me. Miss Claythorne? I wish I had. It's an unfortunate oversight. One should never be careless when visiting a place one doesn't know. Why didn't you tell us you had a revolver? Nobody asked me. I've got him thirty pockets. Aren't you wasting your time? I know where it is. George, you said just now that one of us was the murderer. If I were you, I wouldn't let the law get at that gun. It's not here. Look again, Blore. It's got to be there. Look at his pocket. No, we'll take him off. We'll take him off. Not here. What did you do with it? What did you do with it? Good heavens, where is it? The one who can answer that question is obviously not going to speak. At a time like this, Game of the mind, Blore, a game of the mind. You know, the safest thing for you to do is to stay in your room, with the door locked. What about yourself? Oh, I wouldn't stay out here alone with any of the others. Why not? Don't you think it's strange that there's never a third person present when... 
Anything unpleasant occurs? Mr. Owen always manages to be alone with his victim. When a third person is present, nothing happens. Doesn't that make you nervous? Out here with me, alone? But we're not alone. I asked Mr. Blore to keep an eye on us. He's my third person. Blore! Look, another misfortune. Something wrong with the machinery. And batteries must be running down. We've got to keep every light in the house burning tonight. I'll go to the woodshed and see to it. Leave it on, Doctor. Leave it on. Throw so you off your game, won't it, this uh, flickering? You went away from the window and left me alone. I've got to go to the woodshed. You better go to your room and lock your door. I shall. I don't know. Where's Bloor? Right out of the woodshed. Woodshed? What's wrong, Doctor? Oh, I see. You and I, were we are alone in the house. Lumber! Lumber! Come here! Don't leave us! Miss Claythorne, answer me. Well, don't come any closer. Where is she? Keep back. Lord, if you don't tell me, I swear I'll kill you. If you make another move, I'll, I'll blame you. No, don't, please. Give me a chance. If you are, Mr. Owen. For heaven's sake, tell me. I, 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 I won't say a word to the others. Don't torment me this way. If, if you want to kill the others, I won't interfere. I won't say a word. I'll even help you if you'll spare my life. Look. I trust you. Don't you trust me? Um, yes. That's Maurice. Don't come any closer! Isn't your arm getting tired? Don't worry about me. Listen, if Miss Claythorne is safe in her room, as you say, we're both behaving like idiots. Can't get around me that way. I prefer being a living idiot. Someone's coming. What? Miss Claythorne. I told you to stay locked in your room. I'm looking for... Oh. He's right, Vera. You shouldn't be so careless. Come on. Stay here, both of you. Now I can do what I came out to do. Do you know anything about electricity? Don't bother me. I get it! Stay where you are! I shan't move an inch. Neither will I. Till the light comes on. Do you think it will? Well, why not? This is no accident. Someone wants this house to be dark tonight. Who? The one we fear. But my dear doctor, he's made a mistake. This uh, trick of putting out the lights clears two people. You and me. Now we can trust each other. I see. Yes, the, the idea was to keep us in fear of each other. But now we can form an alliance, you and I. We no longer have anything to conceal from each other, have we? Just what I was thinking. Oh, I needed that. <laughs> now. Now we can tell each other the truth. The entire truth. back, me hearties. You know, And Then There Were Not is the original slasher movie. It might be the original slasher movie ever. 
Yes, it's treated like a whodunit, but think about it. Everybody is trapped at a remote location. In this case, an island, but more commonly, uh, like a summer camp. You have a strong, unseen killer doing his job on everyone, like Jason or Michael Myers. Uh, I mean, the body count in this one is large. So far, that is. And at the end, there can be only the killer left, right? I mean, and then there were none. So in those terms, it is a slasher film. And speaking of slashing, why don't we get back to doing it with some celery or carrots or something, you know, for Thanksgiving. Getting back to our newest galley chef from the YouTube sensation, Cooking with Papa. Guess who it is? <laughs> <laughs> My finger's in the lens. There we go. Ah, welcome back to Dead and Buried Treasures. Here we are, Cooking with Papa from YouTube's Cooking with Papa. And Papa appreciates... You're joining us here on me ship as me new head chef in the galley. Normally all I eat are these things. Pirate's bootios with aged cheddar. And while they're good, they just don't hit the spot, do they, Talia? Of something as good as Papa can whip up. So getting back to it, what do we got going on here? Oh, uh, our meat for our chestnut and sausage stuffing is nice and brown. Tell me that doesn't look good. Pirate, how about you smell it? Oh, okay, let's see if I can get there. Oh, yes, it smells delicious. <laughs> that is really good stuff. Oh, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it looks great, and we are ready to add in our veggies. Alice, want to grab the veggies? Oh, every good growing pirate needs these. Mm-hmm, ready? Put them in there. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now what is that? Is that onions and uh, celery? Yes, now we have a little onions, celery, and carrots. That's the trifecta. That's the mixture that we use uh -huh. in the base of just about everything. We're gonna have a little bit more olive oil. Oh, a little bit more rum too. We'll get you out there. Oh wait, that's olive oil. Olive what am I saying? Oil. Yeah. Olive oil. Oh, now it's looking good. It's now taking some shape. We're gonna get this all mixed together. Let that cook for a little while. Well, anything and while we do that, Captain. Yes. We're going to start getting our bread ready as well. Oh, that's the main ingredient oh, that makes stuffing yes. so good. you got to have bread if you're going to have stuffing. Right? It's better than this. Oh, what do we got there? We have our beautifully cute, fresh sourdough bread. Oh, we'll that's in the bowl, Tiles. All right, Tiles, that looks good. Here you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, my whole galley hasn't smelled this good since before me head chef left. Oh, yeah. That Would looks like good. Cream? Okay, there you go. All of that. Put it in there. Oh, yeah. Good. Now that looks good. And you're going to mix that with this, correct? Yes, we are. Add the egg. Is that eggs? Rocky drink could drink that whole thing. And some chicken stock. We're gonna add about half, about a cup. And and this is the fun part, towels. Ready? Smush it. Oh! Smush it. I can get Mr. Bones down here to do some smooshing. <laughs> I'm not sure Jack would. He'd probably just walk around on it. That's it. But I don't think, Tyler, you wouldn't want to walk around on that, would you? No, well, I didn't think so. Okay, here you go, Tyler. Well, all right, now let's continue to stir fry this a little bit. Saute it, stir fry it. Hey, we just call it cooking. All right. <laughs> I just call it dinner. It looks delicious. This has to get, we want to, we want to let the uh, veggies get a little soft. Okay, so we're going to let that cook for another, oh, five minutes or so. And, then, and then we do the magic. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, well, I guess this is okay. I'm going to touch up the makeup. Oh, what, where, where, what okay. the? Did you? I don't really think your makeup was bad, but, you know. Uh, I'm sure that Gardy could probably help her down there doing something. Uh, but uh, as women. we leave, as we leave. Women. Uh, <laughs> women. Exactly. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Papa, we're going to go to a break right now. For those of you watching at home, we're going to get back to Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. <laughs> and 
while you're picking yourself up off the floor from that one, mateys, let me introduce you to another great bit of casting. Dead and buried treasures is your weekend haunt. That's Friday and Saturday nights beginning at 11 with a new show the first Friday of the month right here on this Fright Network affiliate. Well, you certainly had that one loaded in a chamber. And don't miss our Fright Network pre-show at 10.30 where Fiori from the movie review show Outtakes with Fiori and series creator Eric Sprouse <laughs> take you for a behind-the-scenes tour with insight into making each episode. Because I probably look significantly different than Captain Calico Drake, I do. <laughs> Plus, your chance to win even more horrific prizes each week. I should be hearing from the FCC any minute. <laughs> so don't forget to call and leave your feedback on the show. Like this one? And ask questions where your Q&A will be read on the air. <laughs> like this one? <laughs> Get your Dead and Buried Treasures merchandise at redbubble.com with the search words Dead and Buried Treasures. T-shirts, travel mugs, hoodies, blankets, phone cases, and much, much more. You too can even take a shower with Captain Calico Drake with a shower curtain. This is ridiculous. How is this even possible? That's redbubble.com and use the search words Dead and Buried Treasures. So what are you waiting for? You too can be as cool as a pirate. Yes, of course. That's redbubble.com and search for Dead and Buried Treasures. Redbubble.com That I thought I would dabble in the art world myself. That's redbubble.com and search for Dead and Buried Treasures. I, they'll no doubt want to pay top dollar for me service. Arr, it's that time, me hearties. It's time to welcome aboard new crew members to the Dead and Buried Treasures fan club. <laughs> and by doing so, here is your bounty for this month if ye can decode this show's secret message. <laughs> so get ready to pause those DVRs, mateys, and honor the code. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, mateys, and to those of you out there who are not yet members of the crew just yet, what the devil are you waiting for? Contact Phoenix Comics and Toys online and be a part of all the fun. You too can walk away with horrific prizes and booty. And who doesn't like booty? Ah, uh, Captain! Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, I, I mean, um... Uh, taken part in all the f fun and games. <laughs> yes. I certainly don't want another meeting with the network about being PC. So, yes, best of luck to you, <laughs> me hearties. And remember to honor the code. You too can take part in all the fun and win prizes from dead and buried treasures. Just become members of the fan club. By becoming a member of Captain Drake's crew, you receive an autographed 8x10 picture of the Captain and Jack, welcome letter, a crew doubloon keychain, quarterly newsletter published four times a year, discounts at conventions, on Redbubble merchandise, and of course the decoder statue of Captain Drake that helps you decode the secret messages that the Captain sends out each show where you can win prizes exclusively to those who are the first to solve the secret pirate codes. So contact Phoenix Comics and Toys and begin the fun today. And remember to honor the code. <laughs> yeah! Arr, we asked and you responded. Hey, I was just calling in because I wanted to say I like what you guys have got going on there. I really enjoy watching because I used to watch shows like this back when I was a kid and it, watching it brings back a little bit of nostalgia from before and I just wish there was more uh, shows like this on the air now because watching it brings back all those memories of before and it's just really nice to see all that. Why hello, Dead and Barry Treasures. I just wanted to call and leave a message that I was very impressed by your show. It's very well done and it might be one of the best locally produced programs I've ever seen. 
It reminded me of the old Chiller Theater in the 80s with Chili Billy. And I absolutely love your show. I tell everybody about it. I even had my friends over, some kids, and my grandchildren over a couple of Fridays back when it was on. And we all gathered around and made popcorn like the old days and, and had some fun watching some television as a family. So I thought it was very well done. And Captain Drake is very funny. And the parrot is hilarious. Well written, well crafted, very good show. Keep it up, Ted and Barry Treasures. Hey man, I think your show's kind of groovy, and I just love it. Groovy, man, groovy. Hey, keep up the good work, guys. Okay, talk to you later. There are no further messages. Ah, operators are standing by. Welcome back, me hearties. Papa is here in our galley and he's cooking up a storm, so let's get to it. Yes, Mr. Bones. Captain, before you proceed, we are ready to provide some history on tonight's film, as always. Very well, Mr. Bones. Let's get to it. Welcome to And Then There Were None 101. <laughs> This is considered the original slasher movie. Although it is a detective mystery, if you look at the plot's structure and how it progresses, ten people isolated in a remote house or location. The prophecy at the beginning of the story that they will all be killed. The people being killed off gorily by one mystery killer, one by one. The bodies turning up here and there and everywhere, decorated in hideous ways by the killer to taunt the survivors. All the way till the ending when the final girl faces off against the killer, this is definitely the structure of a slasher movie. Now, it's not that different from Friday the 13th, if you think about it, right up to the mystery killer, the final girl, and the surprise ending. It would be the prototype for other slasher movies to follow. Years later, like Psycho, Halloween, more Friday the 13th movies, and considerably more. It may not be a slasher movie by today's standards, but it was released on Halloween in 1945. <laughs> there is no dialogue at all in this film for the first five minutes. The body count in this film, if you've been keeping track, is eight. Bloor stops Dr. Armstrong from touching Prince Starloff's whiskey glass, reasoning he shouldn't get his fingerprints on it. However, he never once objects to Dr. Armstrong holding the knife that killed the general, the axe that killed Rogers, or the revolver that Lombard holds in his hands after finding the judge shot in the head. That's just weird. Agatha Christie authored the most popular mystery novel of all time, and then there were none. Christie has sold more than two billion books and continues to sell over three million books worldwide every year. Judith Anderson plays Emily Brent, but nerd alert! Pop culture and Star Trek fans may claim that this was not her best role or the one she's the most recognized for. She also played the Vulcan High Priestess in Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. Foreshadowing is big in this film. In one scene, it starts raining. When people come in from the rain, Lombard remarks that all we have to do is keep quiet and we'll eventually hear Mr. Owen, the killer, sneeze. <laughs> Later, at 49 minutes and 51 seconds into the movie, the eventual killer, revealed, sneezes. <laughs> has a notably different ending to the original novel, which involves all ten characters ending up dead, thus the title of the movie. Agatha Christie, however, changed how it finished for the theatrical adaptation, as she felt that the wartime audiences would find it too depressing. And that's it, yeah! Captain! <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bones. And now, let us get back to the galley to see how Papa is producing tonight's Thanksgiving feast. <laughs> Ah, oh, thank goodness. You know what, Papa? 
I love trivia on me show, but what really makes me boat go is the smells and the delicious tastes of me galley. <laughs> well, this is looking good, and I'm sure it's going to taste good. We're just about ready to finish this up for you. Oh, yeah, it does. Where did the co-host go? What's going on? I don't know. Towels. Are you ready? You done with your makeup? What? Yeah. Oh, that towel has just changed. That smells good in here. Oh, yeah, listen, I've been meaning to ask you. How do we get off of this ship when we're done? Off? Oh, mm, we don't really leave. Speaking of a little off, Professor Gurney, what are you doing down here in the gap? What does he, what are you doing? Nothing. Are you getting your refuel? Yes, Captain. Get out of my spot. This is my show. Oh, you're right. Beautiful. I'm just going to take these. Oh, Professor Gurney's refueled with something else. While we do that, she ikes her wines. Sorry about that, Papa. Uh, we're used to it. Right, Tals? Yeah. Talia, I think we're ready for the last part. So you want to take the rest of this broth and put it in there with the bread and chestnuts? I'm going to get a little closer for this one. Perfect. Oh, that looks good. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay. The last part is to mix it all together. Oh, that looks good. This will make a true Thanksgiving feast. <laughs> Are you making dinner? Well, it's the same thing when you're on a boat. You can't tell sometimes when it's night and day only by the angle of the sun or the moon, but I'm sure this will be good in the morning, noon, or night. <laughs> all right, give a good mix to get all the bread mixed in with the meat and the veggies. Oh, look how beautiful that looks. I tell you what, Papa, why don't we make that all mine? <laughs> it's not done yet, Captain. It's got to sure? go into the oven. Oh, it's got to it go looks, into the oven. It looks delicious. Oh, it does. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Now, what do you do with that? Can I just eat it as is, or do you do something else with that? All right, here's what we're going to oh, do. Oh, yes. All of this. Towels. Okay. Hold this tray. Right there. All of this goes into here. Nice and easy like that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, now I want that bowl instead. So what do you do with this once it's in there, Papa? Now this will go into the oven at 400 degrees and cook for another, oh, half an hour, 40 minutes. We will be ready. Oh, that looks wonderful. Now, there is one little secret finishing touch, Captain. What's that? Well, Kels, bring over that. Our butter. What? Oh, I left two spoon. Everybody well, like with that. the butter, you know what? We like it to get nice and brown on top, so we're going to put just a couple slices of butter. Just like that. Of course, with us, it's never just a couple, is it, Tals? It's all over the top. This will help it brown. And what we'll do is we'll cook it for about 30, 40 minutes, and then we'll cover it for another 10 and make sure that it's nice and brown and moist on the inside. Look at that. Tell you, that looks delicious, doesn't it? Okay. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ready to go into the oven, Captain. I like the sound of that. Let's open the oven. We got it nice and hot at 400 oh. degrees. This is going in. And now we do. All we got to do now is wait. And you know, normally, Captain, Dallas, come here. Normally, when we wait, what do we do? We have a little toast. Oh, I love the toast. See. Ciao, everybody. Ciao. Ciao! <laughs> and speaking of ciao, that's going to turn into some in the next segment. So we're going to get you back to Agatha Christie. I'm not even sure how many bodies are left at this point, but we'll get you back there and see how much stuffing is left if Talia doesn't eat all of it. <laughs> Who's going to
must be first. Very well, I shall begin. As you know, Mr. Owen claimed that uh, I was responsible for the death of one Edward Seaton. It's perfectly true. He was an innocent man on trial for his life. I had nothing against him. I wanted to ruin the reputation of his defending counsel, who lost the case, while his client uh, lost his life. Doctor, tell us the truth. Your fate depends on it. I'm convinced of that. The gramophone record did not lie. I operated on Mrs. Cleese while I was under the influence of... Uh, guilty I was, but of drinking, not of killing. I don't see where this is getting us. Sit down, Mr. Blore. This is getting us to a very important conclusion. Isn't that right, Doctor? If I were you, I would uh, speak, Mr. Blore. I didn't kill anybody. Well, listening, Mr. Blore. This Landor chap was innocent, all right. But I was mixed up with the gang that was out to get him. On my testimony, he got sent up for life. That's all. But he died in prison, didn't he? Of course he did. How could I know that would happen? What about yourself, Mr. Lombard? What about those 21 poor natives in South Africa? Don't get excited, Bloor. Mr. Lombard is unable to deny a thing. Ah, that's the first thing you said I believe. Are you leaving us, Miss Claythorne? My dear child, you're trembling. I... I'm so cold. Would you like us to postpone this inquiry while we build a fire? That would mean going outside to get wood, as... Rogers did. No. We'll wait while you get your coat. Thank you. Stay here, Mr. Lombard. Uh, nothing can happen to her if we all remain in this room. my room to get this candle. Where have you been? I've been looking for my flashlight. Where is Bloor? Bloor, what the devil are you doing in my room? Your room? No wonder I couldn't find anything. What happened to you? Somebody bumped into me. Did you hear anything? Yeah, it sounded like a shot. Sounded like something fell to me. You're jumpy, both of you. Nerves. It's Vera's. Vera! Vera! What happened? Don't be frightened, dear. What happened? He was in my room. Who? I felt... Oh, I don't know, something like a hand. Who was it? I... I don't know. My candles went out. We'll soon find out. Seaweed. It felt like a cold hand. That's what Miss Claythorne walked into. Who brought it in here? Who brought it into the house? Miss Brent. Are you sure Miss Brent is...
dead as a doornail. Where's the judge? That's funny. I thought he came up with us. So did I. He was right behind me on the staircase. Yes. I thought I bumped into him. But I heard that shot. Shot? What'd I tell you? What? Why, the old fox knew too much. You say he heard a shot? Yes. Well, you, don't you see? He took a shot at us in the dark. You pot us like clay pigeons we go downstairs. There's one way to find out. It's my own. Ah, oh, it looks too easy. Judge, come outside. Don't think I can't see you. He has been shot through the head. Only one shot fired. next. Another one proved innocent. Too late. He'd found the solution. That's why he had to be silenced. <laughs> silenced by who? By whom? Don't you remember? Uh, one moment, Miss Paythorn. Just when the judge was about to question you, you came up here, presumably, to get your coat. True? Yes. You open that door. Wind blows out your candles. Seaweed touches your face. You scream. Perfect. Perfect. But considerable time elapses, and then we find you way down there. What made you run the wrong way? She didn't know where she was going. She was hysterical. Agreed. But if Miss Claythorne had not screamed, we would still be in the dining room and the judge would be alive. Now, wait a minute. Don't confuse things. One of you two pulled this trigger and you're trying to pin it on Miss Claythorne. Now, you wait a minute, Mr. Lombard. We know very well that the judge was on the point of an important discovery. How do we know what was in the judge's mind? I do know. He took me into his confidence. Truth. The entire truth. Miss Claythorne, did you or did you not commit the crime of which the gramophone accused you? I'd rather not talk about it. Ah, but you must. We've all confessed our little uh, errors, all except you. Come now, my girl. You didn't really kill this Barclay chap, did you? Will you take my word if I tell you I didn't? I'm afraid I will. Then you have my word for it. And don't ask me any more questions. Can't you see she's telling the truth? That is precisely her mistake. I don't see why. You will. You will. The judge reasoned thus. Owen enticed us to this island to be punished for a past crime. Right. We three uh, have admitted, uh, shall I say, <laughs> our guilt. Right. Therefore, we cannot be interested in the punishment of crime. Right. Mm -hmm. Conclusion. Owen is the one who has not committed any past crime. I get it. <laughs> what a wonderful brain. To think he couldn't save his own life. Yes, but he saved ours. Yes, of course. That's the important thing. Yeah. Do you understand now, Mr. Lombard? Oh, it's great. Convincing. Mathematical deduction. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Not you either, Bloor. Now nobody has it. That's an excellent arrangement. Now we can all sleep. Let's turn in, gentlemen. Good night, gentlemen. Doctor, I find one flaw in your theory. I could destroy it in four words. Do you want to hear them? Suppose I said, I am Mr. Owen. It would be most interesting. The trouble with you, Lombard, is nobody can believe you. Too bad. I was just trying to be helpful. Good night. Sleep well. I hope I will. I'm 
sure I will. have you been out Shh. there? Not so loud. But how long have you been out there? Ever since you put out your light. Why? I wanted to be here to welcome Mr. Owen. Locking you in this room and leaving the key outside is a little too obvious, isn't it? It's the doctor or Bloor. And unless I'm mistaken, one of them is going to come through that door at any minute. How do I know he's not here already? You. If you believed that, you wouldn't have opened your window. What about me? Hmm. You're not smart enough. A quick-thinking girl would have confessed to any old crime in order to clear herself of what's happened in this house. Are you sure you didn't kill this fellow, uh, Barclay? Maybe you forgot about it. Or maybe he never existed. Well, yes, he did. Well, maybe he was never killed. Yes. He was. By someone who was close to you. And you were suspected? What happened to that someone who was close to you? She was my sister. I took care of her to the very last. Oh, now I see that Mr. Owen isn't infallible. You don't belong in this house. You haven't killed your way into it. Aren't you ashamed of talking of murder so lightly, Mr. Lombard? Don't call me Mr. And don't call me Lombard. I'll tell you something about Mr. Lombard. Something else that Mr. Owen doesn't know. Miss... Give me a chance to grab him when he comes in. Don't shoot unless you have to. No, no, you keep it in case I can't get back. But he might kill you. If he does, he's going to make a serious mistake. The other thing he doesn't know is, I am not Mr. Lombard. Downstairs. Come on, Blore, we'll catch him. How do I know you heard the doctor? Don't be a fool, Blore. We've no time to waste. 
Well, life is short, isn't it? But I had him too, Mr. Bloor. Oh, you did, did you? It's a nice present you got there. Mr. Lombard's getting generous. You go first. Come on, Vera. Maybe he's in the house. One, two, three. Three Indians only. He wants to make us think he's dead. That's to throw us off the track. You don't fool us this time, Dr. Armstrong. What's that? Welcome back, me hearties. Papa is here in our galley and he's just cooking up a storm. Let's get back to it. Ah, there we go. Well, the camera's all set up now for the next segment, but, uh, where's Papa? Uh, let me see if I can go find him. I, maybe he's, maybe he's down in the keel. I'll be right back, mateys. just can't get enough of dead and buried treasures? You say you want to jam an earring into your lobe because you want to be a pirate so much? And you love ghost stories and other haunted tales to boot and just can't wait for the weekend? Well, before you cause a lawsuit or need a doctor, check out this bonus during the week. Wicked Wednesday Watch Party. That's right, fiends. Join us on Facebook every Wednesday night at 9. A much earlier time slot for all the little mateys out there. For rebroadcasts of Dead and Buried Treasures classics. Often discussing the show in the chat room with Calico Drake himself. Along with other stars of the show. Plus, if you turn into our Facebook page at 830 you'll see a classic episode of Walk the Plank to gear you up for the night ahead. That's Wicked Wednesday Watch Parties, premiering at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook each Wednesday night, if you dare. 8.30 p.m. with Walk the Plank. But remember, only the truly courageous will make it to the end. <laughs> Arr, it's the Pirate's Booty, our after show, seen immediately after Dead and Buried Treasures ends. Captain Calico Drake and series creator Eric Sprouse take your calls for up to an hour, answering questions about the series or whatever's on your mind about the Swashbuckler's Haunt, the club, convention appearances, and much more. That's our after show, the Pirate's Booty, taking your booty calls till the wee hours of the morning, immediately following Dead and Buried Treasures on most affiliates. We asked, and you responded. 
Hey, this is Saul Kummel from Pittsburgh. I just want to tell you guys, I really love Dead and Buried's Treasure Show. I love all the old monster movies. It really takes me back to when I was a kid, and now I'm able to tell my friends, you know, you guys got to check this show out, and it'll bring back so many memories for you. Let me tell you, too, Calico Drake is hilarious. Although, I tell you what, Jack really makes the show. He just busts Calico Drake every chance he gets, and I love it. Keep up the good work, guys. I will be shanghaied into your crew as long as the show is on. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm, I wanted to call in and just tell you that I just absolutely love watching Dead and Buried Treasures. My, I watch it with my kids, and my kids just think the bird is awesome. And I myself love watching uh, the ghosts and horror movies. It brings back a lot of memories. I used to watch those with my parents, and I just think the show is awesome, and we need more shows like that. Hi, I just thought I'd call and tell you I am enjoying your monster movies. They're great, and also, I love Drake. Hope to see more of you. Bye. There are no further messages. Uh, operators are standing by. Don't you wish you had a time machine? Because if you're enjoying Dead and Buried Treasures now while stuffing your face with that cheese popcorn, you could have gone back to the beginning of the night and enjoyed our pre-show as well, Walk the Plank. Walk the Plank takes you behind the scenes with series creator Eric Sprouls, Captain Calico Drake himself, as he reveals thrifty, low-budget special effects in how the show is made. Behind the scenes, plus host Rich Kanji takes your phone calls where you can ask your questions to the captain about upcoming shows as they gear you for the night ahead. So that time machine might have come in handy. Instead, you bought that ice cream maker that's collecting dust in the kitchen because your kids just had to have Dairy Queen and now you're paying the price. But if you remember next time, you too can watch Walk the Plank, the pre-show for Dead and Buried Treasures, and it's on about a half hour before the captain is. Plus, you can win free stuff. Just think about it, which is exactly what you should have done with that ice cream maker. I don't miss Walk the Plank, the sister show of Dead and Buried Treasures, as it gears you up for the night ahead, one half hour before Dead and Buried Treasures on most local affiliates. Yo-ho! Yo-ho! <laughs> Don't miss the absolute worst in monster movie mayhem on Dead and Buried Treasures. Weekends at 11. That's Friday and Saturday nights beginning at 11 and going until roughly 2.30 a.m. Right here on your local Fright Network affiliate, our flagship station, BPTV. <laughs> it's like dinner and a show, Jack. A, a night at the opera. And don't miss our Fright Network pre-show. 10.30, where Fiori from the movie review show Outtakes with Fiori and series creator Eric Sprouse take you for a behind-the-scenes tour with insight into making each episode. Plus, your chance to win even more horrific prizes each week. Pretty good stuff, don't you think? What do you think? So wake the kids and phone the neighbors this weekend and every Friday and Saturday night at 11 with our pre-show live at 10.30 on this Fright Network affiliate and our Facebook and YouTube pages. <laughs> oh, there are just so many people to thank for that such a long list. <laughs> if you dare. <laughs> Phoenix Comics and Toys has done it again. Hi, the coder here. Yar, me hearties. <laughs> the Dead and Buried Treasure Fan Club is now accepting new crews. Each fan club kit contains one to order statue with a secret compartment containing your doubloon, one autographed photo of the captain and Jack, and one welcoming letter. Yar! My gold doubloon! 
decode each episode's code for a chance to win prizes. Yar! <laughs> Set sales to Etsy and Facebook to order yours today. Yar! Buster, your brother needs to use the bathroom. Get your Dead and Buried Treasures merchandise at redbubble.com with the search words Dead and Buried Treasures. T-shirts, travel mugs, hoodies, blankets, phone cases, and much, much more. You too can even take a shower with Captain Calico Drake with a shower curtain. This is ridiculous. How is this even possible? That's redbubble.com and use the search words Dead and Buried Treasures. So what are you waiting for? You too can be as cool as a pirate. Yes, of course. That's redbubble.com and search for Dead and Buried Treasures, redbubble.com. That I thought I would dabble in the art world myself. That's redbubble.com and search for Dead and Buried Treasures. I, they'll no doubt want to pay top dollar for me service. Welcome back, me hearties. Papa is here tonight in our galley from Cooking with Papa, and he's just cooking up a storm. <laughs> mm. But before we get back to eating, and trust me by the smell of it, it smells sensational, let's get you to some movie trivia. Back in September, we tricked you all with a little question, a very simple one, that went a little something like this. <laughs> Nine! <laughs> Nine college students gather for spring break hijinks on the remote island and one by one get knocked off by an unseen killer. Then, in fact, they have not. What is the name of this classic horror film? And here is a little clue for your detective work. <laughs> close. One of the college students was also the star of Friday the 13th, part two. And another was the nemesis, the villain, the bad guy, if you don't understand my Transylvanian, the bad guy versus Marty McFly in Back to the Future, one, two, and three! <laughs> three yeah! films! <laughs> yeah! We even gave you a couple of little hints. To bring you up to speed, let's give you the answers to our clues. First, the star of Friday the 13th Part 2 was horror icon Amy Steele, who, despite meeting her demise in that film, managed to survive in this one. The other clue was none other than Biff Tannen, the evil time-traveling villain from all of the Back to the Future movies, brilliantly played by Tom Wilson, who, by the way, our producer had the pleasure of meeting at Steel City Comic Con last year. And those were your clues. The answer to the question? None other than April Fool's Day. <laughs> Way back in 1986, a movie ahead of its time for sure, as the 80s birthed many, many slasher films, but this one was particularly interesting in how it was shot, as everyone on the island went missing and disappeared, having the audience think that the characters were meeting their demise. Not unlike tonight's slasher film, and then there were none, only to reveal at the end it was nothing more than an April Fool's joke. Congratulations to Melissa Boyer of Mount Washington. Melissa knew her horror history and was the first to respond with the correct answer, winning herself and The Fiend free admission for her and the guest to the Renaissance Festival this year back in September. And that, of course, brings us to tonight's question. Prepare yourself. Tonight's trivia question is brought to you by Steel City Comic Con, where pop culture rules. That is, if you're the first to respond with the correct answer by calling Dead and Buried Treasures, by calling our hotline 
If you are the first correct caller with the answer tonight, you will receive free admittance to Steel City Con on December 6th through the 8th, a weekend pass courtesy of our mateys at Steel City Con in Pittsburgh. And here is tonight's question. According to Wes Craven, this film he himself directed was submitted 13 times to the Motion Picture Association of America in order to get its rating lowered from X to R. Now, if you know the answer, call now on our Dead and Buried Treasures hotline at 412-691-3803 and leave your message with me crew. That's 412-691-3803 for our Dead and Buried Treasures hotline. That question, once again, <laughs> according to Wes Craven, this film he himself directed was submitted 13 times to the Motion Picture Association of America in order to get its rating lowered from an X to an R rating. Now, if you know the answer, call now on our Dead and Buried Treasures hotline. That's right here at 412 691 3803 and leave a message with me crew. That's 412-691-3803 on our Dead and Buried Treasures hotline. That's right, me mateys. Tonight we're mixing it up with our hotline for your trivia question answer yeah! instead of our email. Take note. And speaking of munching on things, what say we quickly check in with Papa and see how he's doing in Magali? Let's make it to my camera. Ah, here we are, back down the galley. I love moving quick, Papa. You know, I can smell it all the way up on the bridge, and boy, does it smell delicious. What do we have going on down here? Well, Captain, I think we're finally ready to pull this out. Oh, I like the sound of that. Let me take this off hook. Oh, so we can get some good shots of what we got going on. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Can you feel that heat? Oh, I can, and then my nose isn't offended either. No, no. Oh my God! Look at will that! You look how beautiful that looks. Look at that, will you? Does that look good? It certainly does. Mm. This is the best smelling stuff out here in the middle of the ocean I've smelled in a long time. Well, our job is finally done. Oh, my job's about to begin. I'm going to be eating this stuff. That's great. And it's a great Thanksgiving meal, too. So do you have a turkey to go along with this? Well, you know, I was thinking about cooking Jack. <laughs> what is it? Yes, we will. Sir. Absolutely. Yes, and we you, will. And speaking of which, while we're about to chow down on some of this, that's the finished product. And what did you call this again, Joe? This is our sweet sausage and chestnut stuffing. Oh, Papa, that <laughs> looks delicious. And while the rest of you out there, your mouths are watering, let's get to the finale of And Then There Were None. <laughs> Say happy Thanksgiving to the captain. Happy Thanksgiving, matey. And we'll see you right after the movie. <laughs> Lombard! Law, what are you doing down there alone? I think I know where the doctor is. Where? Well, I'm not sure yet. I'll wait for you. All right, we shan't be long.
Aren't you being careless unlocking your door when you don't know who's out here? But I thought it was you. You heard it too, eh? I heard you pass my door. Not me. I thought I heard you. Are you sure you haven't been outside of your room? I wanted to ask you the same thing. Maybe Mr. Bloor came back to his room. No, no, no. I knocked on his door. I heard a noise while I was dressing. Like a door slamming? Exactly. You heard it too, huh? What is it? Oh, I don't know. Don't you feel all the time that there's someone, someone waiting and watching? Yes, I know what you mean. Oh, it's just nerves. Then you have felt it. Keep a grip on yourself, darling. There's nothing supernatural about this business. It's definitely human. You mean it's the doctor? The mad doctor. Hiding here? We'll soon find out. Dr. Armstrong. That was Armstrong we both heard. But what was Bloor looking at? What do you see? What is it? It's impossible. Let me see. You're going to see. Come with me. Armstrong. He's been dead for hours. For hours? Since the last tide. No footprints around the body. But if he was... Who killed Law? Yes. There are only two people alive on this island. You... And you. So this is how it ends, Vera. This is how it ends come to the truth now. Yes, the truth, the entire truth. Don't come any closer. Oh, I see. That's not quite right, my dear. It doesn't fit in your nursery rhyme. Don't try to talk your way out. You made one mistake, giving me this revolver. Look, I don't mind being killed, but I hate like the devil to be killed for someone else. Didn't I tell you I wasn't Lombard? What is your name? Charles Morley. You're not a very good detective. Mr. Bloor spotted the initials on my luggage the moment I arrived here. Why did you come here under another name? I knew Lombard very well. He committed suicide. I wanted to find out if Mr. Owen's letter had anything to do with it. You expect me to believe that? Why not? There's something much more difficult to believe. But one of us is Mr. Owen. I know I'm not. And I simply can't believe that you are. Don't try to fool me. I know I'm not. It's got to be you. There's no other explanation. You're so sure? Go ahead and shoot me. You see, you have a doubt. Don't come any closer. I'll shoot. No, you won't. You can't shoot. You still trust me, and I still trust you. There's got to be an explanation. Yes, that's it. You've got to shoot me. Now shoot. But it won't hit you. That's what I mean. Shoot. Don't be frightened if I fall.
game of the mind, Miss Claythorne. You came just in time for my last shot. And now, the game is over. One little Indian boy left all alone. He went and hanged himself and then the one on. It's for you, Miss Claythorne. What if I don't agree to hang myself? Oh, oh, that's been taken care of. Do you mind if I sit down? Every artist has a certain amount of vanity. We, we all like the approbation of the public, and you are my last public. I had two great ideas. The first was a search for perfect human justice. And you've seen the result. To perfect this scheme, my second idea was to find an unwitting accomplice among the criminals invited here for punishment. I needed a respectable fool. And naturally, I selected a man whose fear of death might make him extremely cooperative. I proposed a scheme to confuse the imaginary Mr. Owen. It was simply this. I must appear to be the next victim. Remember the seaweed? Armstrong and I placed it in your room. Your scream was perfect. We pretended to rush out, but according to our plan, we came back. Now, I was assumed to be dead, killed by that gun I had uh, borrowed from Mr. Lombard, and which he found later on the step. I counted on everyone's confusion in the dark, and I counted on Armstrong, who played his part to the hilt. I knew no one would challenge the doctor's authority when he would say, he has been shot through the head. After that, I had to play my part. And what a part it was. No one would suspect me, least of all the dear doctor, who thought that I was about to discover the unknown murderer and was waiting for me on the beach and worrying about the success of our plan. A few minutes later, he had nothing more to worry about. Justice had triumphed once again. Too late, he had learned that drinking when it gets out of hand can be fatal. So you see, the whole thing has been as inevitable as the nursery rhyme. When the boat arrives in the mainland, there'll be ten dead bodies and a riddle no one can solve on Indian Island. Ten? My dear child, I'm an old and sick man. I received my death sentence a year ago. Rather than go painfully and slowly, I choose to leave this wicked world with a proud record of good deeds. But how can you force me to hang myself? The only living person found here with nine corpses will certainly be hanged, as the last little Indian has to be. Public hanging isn't pretty. If you'll allow me to give you a piece of friendly advice, do it now, privately. More dignified. And now my work is done. Never should trust a woman. Thanks for the advice, Mr. Owen. But if I hadn't trusted you, darling, and you hadn't trusted me, by the way, why did you trust me? Why did you? On account of one thing Mr. Owen couldn't foresee. Ah! Somebody! Somebody's still alive! Good morning. Ready to leave now? <laughs> Are we? Are, are the others ready too? You call them.
about you, Jack, but I think that ship captain who has eaten that sandwich will have an interesting surprise when he goes to the room at the top of the stairs and finds a bunch of piled up bodies where there used to be guests. <laughs> it makes you wonder just one question, Jack. Ah, uh, what's that, Captain? What kind of sandwich was that? Yes, Mr. Bones. You know, Captain, I don't often get seasick, but those bodies, combined with the garlic bologna that that sailor was eating, doesn't really seem to do me any favors. Ah, garlic bologna. That sounds delicious. And speaking of delicious, let's get ready to fill our bellies up thanks to our newest galley chef, Papa, from Cooking with Papa. Papa, it's true what we heard, that your cooking talents make you a YouTube sensation. Absolutely delicious. My crew will eat well this Thanksgiving. Thanks for being on my show. Well, it was our pleasure, wasn't it, Talia? We had a good time, didn't we? We are going to get off this boat, aren't we, Captain? Now tell us, Papa, how can our viewers find you if they want to learn some tasty cooking in their futures? Very easy. You have to go to YouTube on Talia Power and look for Cooking with Papa. Lots of episodes, lots of recipes, lots of original recipes from Talia herself, cooking with Papa. <laughs> and maybe Talia might end up joining me crew. She could be cooking with me from now on. What do you think, Talia? Oh, I like the sound of it. I like it. Music to my ears, Papa. You can find us also on Facebook, Cooking with Papa, on YouTube, Cooking with Papa, and uh, just about anywhere else, right, Tals? We're all over the place, soon to have our own cookbook. Well, we'll be right down to chow with you on this Thanksgiving dinner as soon as I wrap this mess up. Well, it was our pleasure. Thanks for having us, Captain. Give them a salute, Towns. Oh, it's a, they're naturals. Thanks again. And speaking of music, Jack, is that Christmas music I hear? Ah, uh, I believe it is, Captain. Ah, and that can mean only one thing. Christmas is around the corner. <laughs> and we have the perfect movie for you this holiday season. Next time, an old bitter miser is given a chance for redemption when he is haunted by three ghosts on Christmas Eve. Yes, you heard that right. Three ghostly apparitions led by the evil Jacob Marley have come back to collect Ebenezer Scrooge and take him to the world beyond in a Christmas carol. Now, Jack, that sounds scary. Three ghosts controlled by this Jacob Marley coming back to take this Scrooge person to the world beyond. Now that sounds scary. <laughs> Be here, me hearties, for our Christmas special on dead and buried treasures. Ah, uh, Captain, we've talked about this before. That's not exactly what happens. What's that, Jack? Ah, uh, that's not what happens. Well, what the devil happens then? Ah, uh, well, I was like, I was but it is scary, right? Ah! Oh, there are moments of real fright in it! Well, then we have an accord. Plus, our one year anniversary is coming up in January, and we have an onslaught of great movies at the helm. Take a look at our lineup. At our viewer's request, we kick off the new year with some Hammer films. The Satanic Rites of Dracula himself launches our January show. Jack the Ripper finally makes his appearance in Man in the Attic in February. What some consider the worst movie ever made makes its launch on Dead and Buried Treasures Plan 9 from Outer Space in March. What could be more fun than waking up a prehistoric monster on a moving train with the return of Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing together again, but this time on the same side in Horror Express. And long before Will Smith was the last man on Earth in I Am Legend, it turns out he wasn't, because Vincent Price was in, well, the last man on Earth. And maybe as a bonus, and just the title, 
destroy all planets. <laughs> it's enough to send chills through me timbers. Uh, are you shivering, Captain? Shivering me timbers? <laughs> I see what you did there, Jack. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Bones. Ready for the open sea, Captain. Ha <laughs> ha Music to me ears. Set a course for the island of dead and buried treasures, Mr. Bones. And we'll see you next time for our Christmas special. Ha 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 ha. Oh, me hearties. It will be fantastic. Spooktacular, even. Until then, remember, it's a pirate's life for me. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> ah, and a parrot's life for me! Ugh, will you two quit taking your curtain calls already? It's time to eat some Thanksgiving down in the galley! Eh, eh? Right away, Mr. Bones, there better be some pumpkin pie left. <laughs> uh, tell Gertie we're coming. Uh, we're coming, Papa! We'll be right down, save some stuffing! Uh, you don't have to tell me twice. Hank, play us out, Hank. We'll, we'll save some food for you. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Drinking the devil be done for the rest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Yeah! <laughs> the mate was faced by the bosom's bike. Bosom's brain with a marlin spike. And a cocky stroll was marred with light. Had been gripped by fingers then And they they lay oh good that man Like a breakout day in a boozing den Yo ho ho in a bottle of rum Fifteen men of a stiff and star Yo ho ho in a bottle of rum Ten of the crew with a murder mark Yo ho ho in a bottle of rum <laughs> Was a cutlass wipe or an ounce of lead Or Yahweh hole and bought a head The skip I got was rotting red And did it lay I done my eyes Looking up at paradise Oh, so much as God's rare wise Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum Fifteen men of a good and true Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum Every man jack could not say we don't pew Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Yeah! <laughs> that was just on just on Spanish gold. Done a blade in a mill hole. And the cabin's right with stuff untold. And day they lay, they took the plum. With slightless glare and their lips drank down. While we sail oh, by the rule of thumb, yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Welcome back, me hearties. Papa is here in our gilly. Gilly? <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna borrow the. Uh, uh, Gertie, what do you got going on there with your wine and your refueling? She didn't leave much for us, that's for sure. Oh, no, I think she's still hanging out because I thought she was gonna walk off this way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and speaking of munching on things, I know a papa has put together a veritable feast for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and speaking of munching on things. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix Comics and Toys has done it again. Hi, the here. Yar, me hearties! The Dead and Buried Treasure Fan Club is now accepting me crew. Wow, that is a and H7. Each fan club kit contains one to quarter statue with a secret compartment containing your doubloon, one autographed photo of the Captain and Jack, and one welcoming letter. Yar! My gold doubloon! Decode each episode's code for a chance to win prizes. Yours! <laughs> Set sales to Etsy and Facebook to order yours today. Yours! Buster, your brother needs to use the bathroom. Now 
available the first season of Dead and Buried Treasures on DVD. That's right, all you horror enthusiasts. If old movies are your thing, and even weirder pirates and ghosts, we have the perfect gift for Christmas, birthdays, Father's Day, M -m Mother's Day. Oh hell, it's perfect for any holiday. Get one for Arbor Day. Excellent. I love watching those funeral scenes from like a like the top of a castle where no one can see you and always sticking me nose in where it's not welcome. Starring Christopher Lee, Vincent Price, Faye Ray, Dick Miller, Richard Boone, Beautiful Women, Killer Robots, Abbott and Costello, Scrooge, Zombies, featuring the directing works of George Romero, Francis Ford Coppola, Agatha Christie, and a whole lot more. Just $79.95. But the good news is the postage is paid anywhere in the continental United States. So what are you waiting for? Get yours today and prepare yourselves for laughs. Things like this always turn out great for us. Just drop us a line on Facebook for details. You won't regret it, but uh, your wallet might. <laughs> That's pirate talk, you know. You just can't get enough of dead and buried treasures. You say you want to jam an earring into your lobe because you want to be a pirate so much. And you love ghost stories and other haunted tales to boot and just can't wait for the weekend. Well, before you cause a lawsuit or need a doctor, check out this bonus during the week. Wicked Wednesday Watch Parties. That's right, fiends. Join us on Facebook every Wednesday night at 9. A much earlier time slot for all the little babies out there. For rebroadcasts of Dead and Buried Treasures classics. Often discussing the show in the chat room with Calico Drake himself. Along with other stars of the show. Plus, if you turn into our Facebook page at 8.30, you'll see a classic episode of Walk the Plank to gear you up for the night ahead. That's Wicked Wednesday Watch Parties, premiering at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook, each Wednesday night, if you dare. 8.30 p.m. with Walk the Plank. But remember, only the truly courageous will make it to the end. <laughs> We asked, and you responded. Hey, this is Saul Kummel from Pittsburgh. I just want to tell you guys, I really love the Dead and Buried Treasure Show. I love all the old monster movies. It really takes me back to when I was a kid, and now I'm able to tell my friends, you know, you guys got to check this show out, and it'll bring back so many memories for you. Let me tell you, too, Calico Drake is hilarious. Although, I tell you what, Jack really makes the show. He bust Calico Drake every chance he gets, and I love it. Keep up the good work, guys. I will be shanghaied into your crew as long as the show is on. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm, I wanted to call in and just tell you that I just absolutely love watching Dead and Buried Treasure. My, I watch it with my kids, and my kids just think the bird is awesome, and I myself love watching uh, the ghosts and horror movies. It brings back a lot of memories. I used to watch those with my parents, and I just think the show is awesome, and we need more shows like that. Hi, I just thought I'd call and tell you I am enjoying your monster movies. They're great, and also, I love Drake. Hope to see more of you. Bye. There are no further messages. Ah, operators are standing by. Get your Dead and Buried Treasures merchandise at redbubble.com with the search words Dead and Buried Treasures. T-shirts, travel mugs, hoodies, blankets, phone cases, and much, much more. You too can even take a shower with Captain Calico Drake with a shower curtain. This is ridiculous. How is this even possible? That's redbubble.com and use the search words Dead and Buried Treasures. So what are you waiting for? You too can be as cool as a pirate. Yes, of course. That's redbubble.com and search for Dead and Buried Treasures, redbubble.com. That I thought I would dabble in the art world myself. That's redbubble.com and search for Dead and Buried Treasures. Uh, they'll no doubt want to pay a top dollar for me service. Don't you?
you wish you had a time machine? Because if you're enjoying dead and buried treasures now while stuffing your face with that cheese popcorn, you could have gone back to the beginning of the night and enjoyed our pre-show as well. Walk the Plank. Walk the Plank takes you behind the scenes with series creator Eric Sprouls, Captain Calico Drake himself, as he reveals thrifty, low-budget special effects in how the show is made. Behind the scenes, plus host Rich Kanji takes your phone calls where you can ask your questions to the captain about upcoming shows as they gear you for the night ahead. So that time machine might have come in handy. Instead, you bought that ice cream maker that's collecting dust in the kitchen because your kids just had to have Dairy Queen and now you're paying the price. But if you remember next time, you too can watch Walk the Plank, the pre-show for Dead and Buried Treasures, and it's on about a half hour before the captain is. Plus, you can win free stuff. Just think about it, which is exactly what you should have done with that ice cream maker. I don't miss Walk the Plank, the sister show of Dead and Buried Treasures, as it gears you up for the night ahead, one half hour before Dead and Buried Treasures on most local affiliates. Arr, we asked, and you responded. Hey, I was just calling in because I wanted to say I like what you guys have got going on there. I really enjoy watching because I used to watch shows like this back when I was a kid, and it Watching it brings back a little bit of nostalgia from before, and I just wish there was more uh, shows like this on the air now, because watching it brings back all those memories of before, and it's just really nice to see all that. Why, hello, Dead and Buried Treasures. I just wanted to call and leave a message that I was very impressed by your show. It's very well done, and it might be one of the best locally produced programs I've ever seen. It reminded me of the old Chiller Theater in the 80s with Chili Billy, and I absolutely loved your show. I tell everybody about it. I even had my friends over, some kids, and my grandchildren over a couple of Fridays back when it was on, and we all gathered around and made popcorn like the old days and, and had some fun watching some television as a family. So I thought it was very well done, and... Captain Drake is very funny, and the parrot is hilarious. Well written, well crafted, very good show. Keep it up, Dead and Buried Treasures. Hey man, I think your show's kind of groovy, and I just love it. Groovy, man, groovy. Hey, keep up the good work, guys. Okay, talk to you later. There are no further messages. Ah, operators are standing by. Don't miss the absolute worst in monster movie mayhem on Dead and Buried Treasures. Ah, you know, Captain, we should be recording this. You know, Jack, we should be recording. This weekend and every Friday and Saturday night at 11 with our pre-show live at 10.30 on this Fright Network affiliate and our Facebook and YouTube pages. If you dare. <laughs> Is it wrong that I want their autograph?